Now, the representative particles uh, that we're dealing with, we need to be aware of three of them for working with the mole. Now, those three uh, involve involve three examples. We got sodium, we got NaCl, we got H2O. Now, first, what is the smallest unit of matter that we can break sodium down into while it still retains its properties? Na. It's just Na, right? Just sodium, an atom. Can you break a sodium atom down and still have it be sodium? No. 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 So that is the smallest, and that's a representative particle. The smallest unit of matter that you can break something down into where it still retains its, its property. So the, the representative particle of sodium would be an atom. I mean, like I said, this is not super challenging. It's just good to hear and, and know. Now let's look at uh, NaCl. This is a little different. Now, generally you want to say it's, not, it's obviously if you separate it, if you break salt down into Na and Cl, it is not salt anymore, is it? Like, or if you have water, you break H2O down into H and O, different things, right? They are no longer water. So we know that you can't separate those. Now you might be thinking, what is the difference between these two right here? Well, there is a difference. Now you want to say compound maybe for both of them, but we need to be more specific. This is what we're going to call a formula unit. So the representative particle for, for something like this would be formula unit. Uh, no. What it is is this. The formula unit is when you have an ionic compound. Now, this is the part you got to think about. This is ionic, okay? And I'll just put a little thing here, ionic compound. What's ionic compound meaning? That's what I'm going to explain. Where it has a two metals. Uh, no, it's not two metals. Oh. It's a metal Where it has a charge, right? It's metal to a non-metal. Yeah, you're dealing with ions. It's basically a metal bonded to a non-metal. That's an ionic compound. It's an ionic salt. So that's what we call ionic formulas. We call them formula units. Now let's say we've got H2O. Is H2O ionic or what is it? What's the other one? Covalent. Covalent. So it's, it's a covalent thing. It's non-metal, non-metal. We call that a molecule. That's the representative particle of H2O. So this is going to be your challenge, your task, whatever. You have to be able to look at these. Like I'm going to be giving you like just some random formula, like iron oxide. And you're going to have to figure out what representative particle you know, would be for, for iron oxide, what it would be. And you would look and say, well, iron oxide, it's metal to non-metal. It's ionic, so it's going to be a formula unit. Or I can say, oh, you've got, you got lithium. What's the representative particle there? It's an atom. Why is this important? because this helps us understand the mole, okay? That's, that's why.